So, welcome back uh, to the, our discussion uh, about limit of a function at a point that was what we were started looking at in the previous lecture. So, in this lecture we will continue our discussion about the same. So, let me just recall uh, what we had defined in the previous lecture and uh, do some one or two examples to illustrate this idea a bit more. So, let us look at uh, what is called the limit of a function at a point. So, we said f is a function say defined on a uh, domain d and in r to r. So, f is a function defined in a domain d and let us uh, take a point c belonging to r such that f is defined at all points near c. See, we are not saying c belongs to the domain of the function, but it should be defined. So, one way of saying is that um, there exists some there is some uh, say uh, alpha belonging to r alpha bigger than 0 such that if I look at on the left side then I have got c minus alpha up to c at least in this portion the function should be defined. So, at all points on the left and all points on the right. So, we should have uh, from c to c plus alpha. So, maybe at the point c which are may not may not be defined, but at least this should be part of the domain. So, in that case we can define what is called the limit. We say that the limit of x going to c of f x is equal to is equal to L if for every sequence C n in this part. So, let us call this as A for every C n belonging to A, C n converging to the point C should imply that f of C n converges to L. So, for every sequence at all points where it is defined. So, for every sequence C n in the domain C n converging to C, f of C n should converge to the value L. Then we say that the limit uh, of the function exists and is equal to L. So, that is the concept of limit. So, uh, we looked at uh, the previous example that we looked at was f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x, x not equal to 1. So, in this example, what is the domain of the function? The domain of the function is equal to whole real line minus the point 1. That is the domain of the function, right? At the point 1, it is not defined. But, so, which is also the same as minus infinity to 1 union 1 to infinity. So, that is the domain of the function, right. So, let us take a sequence we want to know does limit x going to 1 f x exist. So, that is the question we want to analyze. So, to answer this let us take a sequence C n, C n belong to domain of f such that f of such that c n converges to 1. We want to analyze the limit at 1. So, pick up any sequence c n in the domain right. So, that c n converges to 1. Then let us look at the sequence f of c n. So, what is f of c n? By the formula it is 1 over 1 minus c n. Now, as c n goes to 1, 1 minus c n that goes to 0. So, this denominator is becoming smaller and it is going to 0 by the limit theorems for sequences. So, this will go to a value which is equal to if this quantity is positive that means, if all the c n's are less than 1 right then this will go to uh, plus infinity. If 
our cn's belong to minus infinity to 1 right and this will converge to minus infinity if cn's belong to 1 to plus infinity so in either case we say we see that the limit does not exist so whether we go take a sequence cn converging to 1 then f of cn does not converge to a, a suitable value so that means we can write it as that the limit so hence limit x going to 1 of f of x which is does not exist for f of x equal to 1 over x minus 1 right ok. Uh, let us look at uh, another uh, example. So, let us look at another example. Let us say f of x is defined as x square plus 2 if x is less than 0 and defined as minus x plus 1 if x is bigger than 0. Right? So, we want to know, so the question does limit x going to 0 of f x exist? Well, now here we have to start uh, looking at the function and try to make a guess. For x less than 0, it is defined as differently and it is defined differently at for values x bigger than 0. So, it may be a good idea to lo look for sequences which are less than 0 and bigger than 0 and test whether at least for those sequences whether the image sequences converge somewhere or not. So, let us look at, so consider x n bigger than 0 and x n converging to 0. So, when x n is bigger than 0 and x n converges to 0, then what is f of x n? For x bigger than 0, f is defined this way, it the formula is minus x to plus 1. So, that gives you that this value is minus of x n plus 1 for every n, f of x n is this. Now, x n is going to 0. So, by the limit theorems on sequences minus x n will go to 0, minus x n plus 1 will go to 1. So, this value is equal to 1, right. Let us look at a sequence where x n is less than 0. So, let x n be less than 0 and x n going to 0. Then what is f of x n? f of x n is equal to by the formula. So, just recall the formula is for x n uh, less than 0, the formula is x square plus 2. So, it is equal to x square x n square plus 2. Now, x n goes to 0. So, by the limit theorems, if x n goes to a and y n goes to b, then x n y n goes to a into b. So, using that, we get that this converges to this uh, converges uh, to x n goes to 0. So, this converges to 2, right. So, this converges to 2 because x n goes to 0, x n square goes to 0, this goes to 2. So, so we have got if I uh, look at uh, a sequence. So, if I if I look at, so we can write it as limit of f of x n, n going to infinity, x n bigger than 0 is equal to 0, whereas limit f of x n, n going to infinity for x n less than 0 is 2. So, these two indicate, so imply that for, we have got different sequences, both can all going to 0 but the values of the image sequences are different. So, that says that the limit n going to infinity of uh, limit sorry uh, limit of 
the function f of x as x goes to 0 does not exist. That does not exist. So, uh, what we have been uh, trying to do is trying to uh, in the concept of limit when we are trying to approach uh, the point for where we are trying to find out the limit x going to c. So, we are approaching the point c via sequences. Uh, there is another way of uh, uh, looking at uh, this concept of limit via uh, the notion of neighborhoods, uh, which is not very difficult, but, uh, but uh, uh, in fact it is similar to what we are doing. So, let me uh, introduce that idea also, so that we are able to use whichever is required. So, let us once again f is a function defined in a domain d subset of r to r. C is a point in r such that for some alpha C minus alpha union uh, sorry C minus alpha to C this interval union, we want to say that it is defined at all points near C. So, for some uh, interval around C except at the point C, so that is C to C plus alpha is inside the domain. So, that condition is given. So, this is what is given to us. We want to say whether the limit, when can we say that limit x going to C of f of x is equal to L. Now, uh, let me draw a picture. So, this is the domain part and this is the range part of it. So, this is the point C. Okay. So, for every point to C near, so this is C minus alpha and this is C plus alpha. So, here is some C plus alpha. So, that means for all points in this part, the function uh, is defined, they are part of the domain. So, if I take a point x, where does the value go? So, for a point x, it goes to some value f of x, right. So, that is my function. Now, we want to say that as you approach as you approach the point C, right, as you approach, your f of x will approach some value L or not. So, x approaching C, does it imply f of x approaches L? So, we want to give uh, this a precise meaning. Um, one we have already seen via sequences, if I can say for every sequence x n going to C, f x n converges to L, then uh, we say that is the limit. Okay. I want to define it slightly differently here. So, um, so what is that L? Right. So, uh, L is the value. So, L is the value, the function f is expected to take at x is equal to c by looking at at f of x for x near c. So, that is what we want to do. So, at a point x near c, f of x is the actual value the function takes and l is the value that we are expecting the function to take. So, how much uh, um, error or how much is the error? So, this is the distance between the two. So, this is the error one is making. This is the value probably we expect the function to take. This is the actual value being taken. So, this is the error the function is making and we want this error to be small, this to be small for what x? For all x close to C. So, this is so this is what we want to do. So, we can also visualize it x close to C means what? So, let us make that also precise. 
x close to c the same as saying x minus c is small right that is the distance so distance between fx and l is small for all x close to this to make this uh, uh, slightly more precise now we want this value to be small right we want to say as x comes closer to c f of x is coming closer to c right so how close that we will say beforehand i wanted this much close so one writes given a number epsilon bigger than 0 i want this error you can think this as a error being made this is the actual value this is the expected value this is the error so if we want error to be small given epsilon we want fx minus l to be less than epsilon we want the error to be small by the way uh, this greek letter epsilon uh, is something equivalent to the uh, english alphabet e so error we write as epsilon so this is epsilon okay so we want this to be small when x minus c is small but how small right what are the smallness for x minus c so we say it more precisely as that once you are given a margin for error i should be able to say that for all points sufficiently close this is true so that sufficiently close is specified as as follows so given epsilon bigger than 0 that is a margin for error there exists some positive real number delta bigger than 0 such that if x is close to c by delta by the distance delta of course not equal to c so we put bigger than 0 then this should imply that f of x is close to l by that pre specified margin for error so this is precisely saying if this happens then we say limit x going to c fx is equal to l so in a sense here we are saying all points close to c f of x is close to this earlier we had the closeness in terms of sequences for every sequence when a sequence xn is converging to c it is going going to come close as close as you want right and f of xn is converging to l so that is going to come close as close as you want so uh, the notion of limit one is via sequences namely this limit exists if for every sequence xn converging to c f of xn converges to the same limit l or we can also say it by this way that for every margin for error for every given epsilon there exists a delta bigger than 0 such that whenever x is close to c by delta fx is close to this by epsilon i can uh, also exhibit to you this as a picture so let us look at uh, in the picture this is x and this is y right so um, what we want to do is there is a point c where we want to analyze the limit and we want to say that the limit is equal to some value l right so when you say given epsilon bigger than 0 right x minus c there is a delta such that this happens so the given epsilon you want to say distance between fx and l is less than epsilon that is same as saying if this is l minus epsilon and this is l plus epsilon so you want your f of x to be inside this value right for what x whenever x x minus delta and x plus delta when there is a delta so that x minus c the distance so if i take this portion and then i take any point if i take any point here say 
So, this is C minus and this is C plus. If I take any point x here in between and I look at where does the graph hits. So, the graph of the function should lie between should be visible in this. That means, the graph of the function for these values should look like something this. Right? That is how the graph should look like because for every point if I look at the value right, it will be inside here. If I look at a point the value will be inside here. If I look at a point the value will be. So, this is the error for margin and this is the uh, this is the neighborhood or this is the interval around C which we should be able to find. So, this is given and there exists. Error for margin is pre specified and the interval around delta you have to find out if you want to say this is equal to this. So, this is what is called the epsilon delta definition of the concept of limit of uh, a function at a point. So, either one can be used depending upon the uh, convenience. So, let us look at uh, one example in this way also. So, let us look at uh, that example that we had f of x is equal to 2 x plus 1 if x is not equal to 1 and we had this equal to 5 if x is equal to 1. Right? By the lim sequences we said limit of x going to 1 f of x is equal to 3. Right? That limit is equal to 3. Because if I take a sequence, so the reason was if x n converges to 1, then f of x n is equal to 2 x n plus 1 and that converges to 3. So, the limit should be equal to 2 plus 1. So, that is what we establish by the definition of sequences. Let us try to uh, do an analysis. So, let us say given epsilon bigger than 0, can we find delta bigger than 0 such that mod of f x minus here the value expected is 3 less than epsilon for 0 less than mod of x minus 1 less than delta. So, this is what we want to do. So, what we want is we want to make f x minus 3 small. So, let us start analyzing that quantity. What is f f x f x minus 3? So, let us analyze that quantity a bit. So, the quantity which we want to make smaller than epsilon is f of x minus 3. Right? So, let us put the value of f. f is equal to when it is not equal to 1, the value is 2 x plus 1. So, this is equal to 2 x plus 1 minus 3. Right? So, let us simplify this. So, this is 2 x minus 2, which is equal to 2 times x minus 1. Right? So, we want 2 times x minus 1 less than epsilon for some delta for which mod x minus 1 will be less than delta. So, we want whenever this is true, this should be true. So, now let us just compare, I want 2 x minus 1 to be less than epsilon, but if I find a delta that is going to give me x minus 1 is less than delta. So, both these things motivate one to say, let us choose delta bigger than 0. So, we have to find some. So, let us choose delta bigger than 0 such that 2 times x minus 1 is less than delta. Right? 
we can always do that right so that that means x is between so in a neighborhood around 1 minus delta to 1 plus delta so we can do that then what is f of x so look at this equation so we had f of x minus 3 was equal to 2 times x minus 1 so if x is delta it says that 2 times this is less than 1 then x minus 1 is less than right then x minus 1 is less than uh, is such that uh, okay either way we can do it but oh, okay let us choose delta say that this is less than delta then this is going to be less than delta so if delta is less than epsilon that will do the job right so we can choose delta less than epsilon provided your know, delta is this or another way of that would be let us choose a delta says that let us cancel out this two okay so anyway we are going to choose that this is less than delta right so or if it is two times this then it will be two delta so it will be two delta and that should be less than epsilon so uh, this is how you analyze if you want fx minus l less than epsilon so first analyze fx minus l you will get this value and somehow you should try to bring in x minus c so that is x minus c is one here i have to try to bring in x minus c so that is this quantity okay so we are because x minus 1 is going to be less than delta our delta is going to be such that this is true so this quantity is going to be less than 2 delta so 2 delta should be less than epsilon so claim is given epsilon bigger than 0 choose any delta such that 2 delta is less than epsilon then 0 less than x minus 1 less than delta will imply f x minus 3 which is equal to 2 times x minus 1 which is less than 2 delta will be less than epsilon. So, that will prove that the limit by this method x going to 1 f x is also equal to 3. So, that will also prove that way. So, this is called the epsilon delta method of uh, checking uh, whether something the limit exists or not. I will not uh, um, will not specify too much uh, for the epsilon delta method of finding limits. Uh, most of the time uh, we will give you some more rules uh, to analyze limits uh, whether epsilon delta or uh, sequence method and using those rules one will be able to um, analyze the limits uh, of a function at a point whether it exists or not. So, let me just summarize we have tried to give you a feeling for what is meant by saying that the limit of a function at a point exists that says that you want to say that limit of f of x, x going to c exists. So, first of all the point c need not be in the domain of the function that is 1, but we need that the function should be defined at points close to uh, the close to the value c. So, at all points close to this uh, value c the function should be defined that should be in the domain. So, we that means what given a point c there are points there are sequences in the domain uh, which we, we can find which converge to the value c and the limit exists says that for any sequence at c n which converges to c f of c n should converge to the value uh, l same value l then we will say that the limit exists. And we also gave an alternate definition which is uh, the neighborhood definition it says given epsilon bigger than 0 right you look at given an epsilon bigger than 0 you the, uh, the error f x minus l you want to make less than epsilon. So, for that you should be able to find a delta bigger than 0 so that for all points in a neighborhood of delta of length 2 delta uh, at the point c of course, not equal to c the f of x should be close to l by at the most it should not go away from l by distance l. So, given epsilon bigger than 0 there is a delta such that x minus c 
strictly bigger than 0 less than delta I implies absolute value of f x minus c is less than epsilon. So, we will continue this discussion of limit and its applications in our next lecture. Thank you.